hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is rick and i got um the nakamichi dragon 11.4.6 surround sound system about a month ago i have made an initial um initial impressions video on the channel and for everyone who watched that thank you so much for watching that i hope it helped a bit and for anybody who need, uh, would like to know my initial thoughts on the system you can watch that video first and I wanted to make another video just for uh, since I've lived with this system for almost a month I wanted to give some additional impressions on what I found um, easy in the system what I think needs some work and just my like a bit more detailed impressions once since I've spent a bit of time fine-tuning it and testing out different things on this for almost a month so um, to begin with let's um, talk about build quality because this is this is a very robustly built soundbar but if you feel like and again you can't see it but there are slight imperfections over here and towards the side and I know before anybody comments on my current setup I know that it is not ideal I actually bought a TV riser but it would not support the weight of the TV and I had to return it so in the meantime I just bought two wooden blocks from Home Depot painted it black and put the TV on it I know the white channel will not be as great sounding as I would hope for it to be but I'm still working on a TV riser because I might be potentially getting a 98 inch TV instead of this so it has to work for that as well but this is a 2 inch block and if you see the TV actually barely clears the sound bar so the sound bar is 4.4 inches high so make sure that that is something you um, keep in mind when buying this system other than that I feel like it is really solidly built and especially going from um, a soundbar that had like fabric on it to this it is absolutely amazing and um, for the surround speakers I have it on a speaker stand that I got that is the Canto SP32 PL speaker stand it's 32 inches and it has a bottom mounting screw that helps keep the speaker stable and I know it looks a bit like it's jutting out but um, this was $129 when it goes on sale usually and I was not willing to play, pay $400 just for the Nakamichi stands and that's where the subwoofer is and the setup is similar to the other side now talking about the experience of using this system it's not as plug and play as Nakamichi or some of the other reviewers would have you believe because there is a fair bit of work that goes into setting it up so that I can watch the stuff that I actually want to watch so say you switch from movie to music and your movie settings will not translate very well to music it will sound weird and that's that's what I've noticed like I have to make adjustments between what I'm doing when I'm watching something that's the one thing I miss from my Samsung soundbar because that soundbar had an adaptive mode which basically meant that all I have to do is leave it on there and it will automatically detect what signal is coming in and it will adjust the system accordingly and that was absolutely amazing but I wish this had something like that where it would it detects the kind of source you're giving it so if it's a blu-ray disc that has DTS um, some particular signal it will detect that and it will give you options based on that but it won't actually switch between different uh, modes and that is something I wish Nakamichi would make like an adaptive mode or something that would actually help with that but the remote has two um, favorite one and favorite two favorite one I've set it up according to movies and favorite two is according to video games because that's the top two use case that I have in my household music is there but for music I have to manually change everything 
but what I've noticed is that in certain instances I have I have to play around a lot with the subwoofers even when watching movies or something because I recently watched Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse again and when there is a scene where Miguel enters the ca scene for the first time and there is a bass drop like there's a huge bass drop and every time I've seen this the bass drop has been uniform but with this system there have been certain artifacts that have been introduced with that which makes it sound kind of like it's like the sub is bottoming out and I do not expect that from the system so I've had to fine tune it a little bit and same with the killer when i watch the new david fincher movie there's a background score that is really bass heavy and in certain scenes and it seemed like the subwoofer was bottoming out i had to actually turn off two of the subwoofers and reduce the bass to make it go away but that was kind of kind of finicky and so far there has been only one instance where the sound system just freaked out on me and completely started playing this ear splitting like tone and it was just very staticky and very very disturbing tone and I had to shut it off immediately so that it goes away and I was worried for a second because that is not something I would expect from a system that costs so much the uh yeah so the one thing I would say is that it is not as easy to switch between stuff like going from watching a movie to playing music to playing a video game there are two custom presets that you can set on your remote and that makes it easier but if you want to go to music again you have to set your uh, subwoofer the surround sound mode needs to be set to something and the music preset the one that you see right here that will need to be set again uh, differently so it is it is a bit more work and I wish that it had some kind of, um, what do you say, some kind of auto EQ which detects what kind of, what kind of activity you're doing on the TV and adjust accordingly. Also the room calibration, I really wish that this had a mic which would auto calibrate, like help with that calibration process because even though if, um, what I've noticed is after setting up the room calibration, the left surround speaker was um, sounding a bit more in volume than the right one. So I was getting more effects from the left one than the right one. So I had to adjust it. And again, my house is open concept, so that might have something to do with that. But it is um, like a mic would genuinely benefit the whole calibration process and I feel like there are much cheaper AVRs that have that. So I feel like that is a missed opportunity with this system. Other than that, now let's move on to the positives. Like playing video games, music, especially um, the stuff that they say in the concierge page that play rolling in the deep. You know, like you hear these background effects that you've never heard in your life and like I've heard this song on like earphones since the time it came out and listening to it on the dragon was a completely different experience. Same with a lot of movies. I absolutely love watching movies with the system. It really enhances. It, it feels like genuinely a home theater. Like you actually it shakes and the bass is really rich, you know. So when, when it when it hits, it hits really hard. And, you know, it's like room shaking like i have some stuff on the wall and it vibrates when there is like a bass heavy scene and it is absolutely amazing the experience of playing a game which has which takes advantage of the surrounds and it immerses you so well in that atmosphere that you feel a different level of enjoyment while playing these video games and with same with the music and movies it is really good at what it does there are just minor nitpicks that i have and that i wanted to point out because i've seen a lot of reviews on the system and most of them sing praises of the system but nobody points out the small things that are actually like bug somebody you know like some some of the negatives on here and 
it's um, another thing that I would say is that the actual on-screen display like the graphic I and again this this might be a very personal thing but the text that they've chosen and the interface that they've chosen looks very 90s computer you know it, it looks like a very old school 90s computer that is um, running very low RAM very low memory and all of that stuff and it just feels like they could have done a much better job with the interface with like making it more modern than it looks like the text looks very blocky and it looks like like they cheaped out on the pixels you know like that it they didn't have enough graphical memory so they just made the most basic version of anything it's it's very friendly like it actually explains stuff and it gives you a lot of information i just uh, wish that this was presented in a much better way like there there is a much richer way of doing that but then again i've not used a um on screen display i don't have a home av receiver so maybe that's that's the norm but that screen right there really helps because you can set everything according to what you want and it the screen actually shows whatever you're setting and that's one of the things that i upgraded from the samsung one which had the screen on top and which really bugged the living daylights out of me like to put it mildly but yeah those are some of my um thoughts on the system after living with it for almost a month i am still extremely glad that i bought this system and i have been enjoying it ever since but there are just a few things that you know and again i know that it's a big investment so i like to give as much details as possible so that you can make an informed decision on whether certain things bug someone but they might not be a non-issue for someone else you know so it is just one of those things where um to each his own and i hope this video has provided some utility for you in either making your decision or just getting to know the system a bit better if you have any questions uh, please let me know in the comments and as always thank you so much for watching